Hey everybody, it's Trent Austin from Austin Custom Brass, and I have a couple microphones here. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about basic trumpet mic technique. I want you to be aware, especially if you want to ever be kind to the sound man, to try not to do certain things. And the first one, and this might be a little loud just to warn you, is this. which is burying your bell inside the microphone. Now, I will say, something I learned from Clark Terry, watching him over the years, is that he did often play really into the microphone for a dark sound. And I'll demonstrate by that, but you don't want to push and play too loudly. And you also, if you actually use this technique, you want to tell the sound guy. Say, sometimes I like getting really close to the mic and like that richness that that offers so that they can adjust and push your volume levels down. They see a trumpet and they run away uh, instantly. They're like, it's too going to be too loud. It's going to be too loud. In this case, you, you might want to talk to them prior to doing that. It's always a good idea to be friends with your sound guy because especially if you're playing in a loud acoustic environment and you're using the microphone for sustenance, you're going to need them to help you throughout the gig. So check this out. I'm going to turn off my talking mic because the talking mics might actually make this sound a little too too loud. So I have two microphones here. One is an SM57 Sure, It's the industry standard for most pop and, and rock gigs, but it's actually a really strong, durable, uh, and decent sounding microphone. Uh, and I also have this Barkley uh, Riven microphone. A friend of mine in the uh, uh, in, uh, I think, Ireland, sorry, Mike, um, is making this mic, and it's a beautiful sounding microphone. They're very different techniques that I'll talk about with each one in terms of how I use it. And you'll also see the positioning of this microphone looks kind of weird, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first, let's talk about just general tonal colors you can get with this mic alone. So I'm going to turn off the other two microphones so you can hear that. What I did on each one of those is move around. Hopefully, you can hear a different tonal uh, sound. I haven't. I don't have an, uh, a monitor on this video, so I'll actually listen to this afterwards and see how that uh, works. But you could do a lot with how you angle your instrument and the distance. More often than not, if you're playing a pop gig, you want to be about six to eight inches away from. The microphone get a sound shield as well that will super help and put play with earplugs or in ear monitors so you don't overblow all the time um, with a ribbon mic however it's a different technique notice the ribbon mic is down it's upside down this is actually acoustically in my opinion the best way to record on the ribbon mic none of these um, None of the audio that you're hearing right now has been altered in any way, so this is very raw audio. Let me show you a little bit I'm doing on the ribbon microphone, turning off the 57 and my talking mic. Hopefully you'll hear 
a difference in the sound when I backed up and gave it a little bit more energy. So depending on what your practical application is, say you're doing a, a small trio record, the distance away from the microphone will change the tonal color of your instrument. If you want a little bit poppier sound, you want to give it a little bit more energy, you can take a step back. I think ideally on a ribbon mic, you play a few feet away and ideally have something like, and I'm going to grab it and bring it over so you can see something like this, which is an acoustal, acoustic, acoustical sound baffle that you could put the ribbon mic in. So like the trumpet sounds here, the ribbon mic's here, and then the baffle's there. So it only picks up the sound of the ribbon microphone. I think it's super important to have that in mind. So hopefully you got a little bit out of this. One, don't bury your microphone unless you're really friends with the sound guy or gal. Two, try experimenting with different positions for, of the microphone for different acoustical sounds, different energy levels, different sort of charisma that you could create without really changing any gear. Uh, I was actually using a long model cornet on this clip, so there's a lot of sound uh, possibilities by using microphone technique. Hope you got a lot out of this lesson. Hit that subscribe button over there to stay up to date. Actually, yeah, no, it'll be over there. Uh, I never know where I'm going to put it. To stay up to date with all of our uh, mini lessons and uh, product offerings at ACB. Thanks so much, everybody.